Here on Now You Know, we've been testing out the Rivian R1T for our viewers. It was important for us to buy it ourselves so that way we could give our own honest reviews without being beholden to Rivian. We've already tested the R1T, towing the heaviest thing we can find, camping with the Yakima tent, packing bikes on it, and even making our own much cheaper version of the camp kitchen. But this week, we decided to test out long distance range while towing a camper. Next on In Depth. And thank you to Chesapeake Climate Action Network Action Fund for sponsoring today's show. Just a reminder, there's barely four weeks left before our friends at CCAN give away a truly amazing Tesla or a launch edition Rivian pickup truck. CCAN Action Fund is a nonprofit promoting clean energy in the fight against heat waves, floods, and other impacts of climate change. Their creative fundraiser gives you the chance to win a top of the line electric vehicle while helping a good cause. And here's the update. The raffle is still undersold. The group has barely sold 2,500 tickets with nearly 3,000 still unpurchased. So that's fantastic news for anyone who already bought a ticket or who wants one now. Visit evraffle.org to take advantage of these ridiculously good odds. Another reminder, the group went out and actually bought a Rivian truck. They have it in their garage in mint condition and you get the keys the day of the drawing. No waiting. And if a Rivian isn't what you want, the winner can choose a build your own Tesla instead with up to $135,000 in Tesla credits to play with. Amazing. All this for a ticket price of just $200. Again, tickets are way undersold. All proceeds fund the nonprofit's work to save the planet. Buy your tickets at evraffle.org. Your odds may never be better. Big thanks to our viewer, Al, who lent us his trailer to test out. We loaded up with everything we needed, and we even added an e-bike trailer for good measure. After we got all packed up, we hopped in the R1T and started to plan for charging. All right, so we're planning our trip here and uh, we're gonna be going up to Maine. So it's 97 miles to get there. We currently have 135 and we're gonna get there with 88. Wait, what? It's, it's, not, it's not that close. Wait, so that means it doesn't take into account that we're towing, it does there, but it doesn't here. So the two don't talk to each other. I mean, this is proportionally the correct amount. We were, we were at 88 miles yesterday and it was roughly that battery amount. So it's like it was driving regular it takes that percentage and then says convert that to miles. But it didn't take the miles. Oh my god, really? Really good. Come on, man. You know what that means? We should just use a better route planner. All right, so you've planned our route and uh, it's we, we got to be conservative here, right? Cuz we don't know. We don't know. I mean, I can enter in, you know, kind of what we were getting uh, in terms of uh, miles per kilowatt hour, but it's not going to be perfect and I want to be I want to plan conservatively. There's a Electrify America Charger in Kittery, Maine. We're headed a little bit further up to Old Orchard. So, I mean, you can see that the difference between Kittery and there is, like, this is almost double. So, I think we're definitely gonna wanna hit the Kittery one. The question is if we're gonna wanna hit uh, Seabrook first, and Seabrook is right here. I'm gonna set it to Seabrook. It's gonna take us there. We're definitely gonna arrive with enough uh, range. Hopefully, the chargers are gonna work there. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So we've been on the trip for about 45 minutes and we've had a good long stretch of consistent driving. I would say uh, high 60s, not really much over 70, um, but you know, I've had to accommodate with traffic. Uh, we've been getting about 1.22 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's our efficiency. That should be giving us a range right now of 108 miles. So we're gonna be hitting basically the, the soonest charger just to uh, kind of reevaluate there, take a break, take a look and see what we've done and see if we can make it all the way to Maine or if we can make it to the next charger and uh, we'll assess there. So, I mean, as you can see, this is not gonna be an ideal setup, but it isn't a bad setup. There is enough room for people to drive through. It's just really unhooking and hooking up this trailer takes a long time. Um, there's a lot of steps that you have to kind of go through. So this is kind of the best option and we shouldn't be here for that long anyway. All right, so we made it up to Seabrook, New Hampshire. This is one of the Electrify America chargers that's on our route. It is roughly 43 miles away from where we live and we do not need to charge here. So here's an example where it's important that all the chargers be working at a charging station. 
This is really the best spot for me to be parked. I, I think I could also maybe charge at that one if I parked over there. But I don't think that I could be parked in these spaces here um, because then I'd be blocking a much tighter row and preventing people from pulling in or pulling out. It's very case specific, but again, this is why it's important. Uh, I would just be able to basically make this cable reach. I'm not really parked in the correct spot, but I don't think that anyone would mind. And again, I do have to give credit to Electrify America. They picked a spot where it's not maybe as luxurious as uh, you know being parked down by Panera, but it's out of the way, so that way you can do kind of dumb stuff like this. Start, and it's 19 miles away. We can definitely make it. As you can see, we're uh, pulling in completely incorrectly. We're blocking all four spots, but there's really no way that we could do this without having to um, leave the trailer out in the middle of traffic or dehitch. So. We're going to plug in real quick. If someone comes along and needs the charger, we'll get out of their way. In fact, they could just pull into this stall here and, uh, and charge. And hopefully we'll be on our way pretty quickly. What's taking so long? You've been here three minutes already. I've been trying to start up my app. I've started it twice and it just sits on the loading screen. Come on. Oh, car locked. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> Shut up. You have your fob on you? I do have my fob on me. Yeah. Why isn't it working? <laughs> that's good. I don't know. I just put a new battery in it too. Okay, unlock, hit the unlock button. Well, that's good. <laughs> At least we're not locked out. This is not what you want to feel when you're walking for yeah, like Prime America to chargers. Charge. <laughs> if we were a Tesla, we would be charging and probably done by now. I know. This is what we're talking about, people. All right, so phone is booting up again. I'm gonna hit the Electrify America app. Okay. Starting screen starts, although I'm not getting overly excited. Hey, oh, here we go. We go. Create you want to create an account? I don't. I, w I want to log in. Log in. Hit the skip up there, maybe. Mm, I, I think you got to wait till this little thing is done. Oops, Oops. something expected to occur. Please check your internet connection. Okay. I've got a little bit of LTE. Okay. So, All right, this is looking good. So okay. you select the charger, right? Select the charger. Ooh, please this says to it does say to unplug it. I don't know. Like, what are you supposed to do? I, I yeah, which I am curious. Like, uh, charge error. When it will start? Please check your blah blah blah. blah. So, oh, that's fun. so okay, unplug. So I'm gonna unplug it. Okay. Leave it unplugged for a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna put it back in its hold. To start. I'm gonna go over to number four. Okay. Swipe to charge. Processing payment. Initiating charging. Please plug in. in. Yeah, you're plugged in, connecting to vehicle, initiating charging. That's good, that's good. Come on, baby. I feel like I'm at the casino. Initiating charging. This is good. <laughs> Woo. Blood pressure was high. Yeah? Still is, actually, because we're blocking all these chargers. I'm just waiting for the excuse me. I know, right? Here we go. 43 cents a kilowatt hour. That is highway robbery, my friends. <laughs> all right, but the good news is we are charging. Let's go check in the car and see what uh, rate we're Whew, okay, so we finally, finally, finally got charging. It says that it's 136 kilowatts. That's great. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty good. This is a 150 kilowatt charger, so we're doing great. When I'm traveling, I think everybody knows at this point, if you've been watching the channel for a while, that I get anxiety. Um, and I have anxiety right now because we're blocking for mm. Electrify America stalls, and I feel horrible about it. I feel really bad about it. Well, but the good part is, right in front of us, you could park and charge. Like, we, we aren't stopping that bay from charging. Oh, sh and Kona just pulled in. I feel terrible already. Uh, I'll get out and let him know. Okay. All right. Can he plug in at the same time? Um, two? We might need to back up a little bit and go to the other charger. We might yeah. just leave, I don't know. Yeah, let's just leave. Okay. We'll do that. We're, we're good to go, so if you want to just um, let us out, we can we can give you the whole thing. I mean, we're not really done charging, but I mean, we can make it. It's just, uh, I feel horrible. No, I feel like a bad person for doing this. I don't know what else I was supposed to do. Wow, I just feel so awful. I feel like a bad person. You, you know? shouldn't. I do. Yeah, we gotta sort something else out, huh? It's gotta be a different system for this. Yeah, no, this wasn't great. Are you talking about the bigger picture? Yeah. Like, no, I don't. Not just you and me. No. It's not, I mean, this isn't, I wouldn't say this is our fault. I was looking in the rear view mirrors, just waiting. I was, the first time in my life I'd been hoping to not see an electric car. <laughs> no one's thought about this this case of, of trailering. I mean, they have, Tesla has thought of it. They have pull throughs and stuff, but like Electrify America is so rudimentary that they haven't thought of it yet. So 
you really can't do any kind of trailers and it's not just campers I mean you might be pulling some bikes or if you're a contractor and you've got something like so it is a very common use case all right so traffic has uh, really let up here and I've been able to go a little bit faster we've been doing about 70 72 um, and that's really affected our range I think there's also been some hills um, and that has uh, affected as well we're down to point nine eight miles per kilowatt hour so uh, that would give the range of the truck uh, less than 135 miles total um, and it's dropped our range estimate down to 73 miles left in the tank I think it's because we've been going fast so to compensate I'm gonna now slow down to maybe a low 60 all right I want to say we've only been going 60 for a very short amount of time but I'm already seeing on that graph on the left that the line is going up so I feel like it's making a difference what do you think I think it's definitely making a difference and it makes complete sense right we've reduced our speed by 10 miles an hour it's gonna have a huge impact in terms of uh, air resistance yeah because I mean if you look at the back of this trailer here it, it is slightly rounded but it's not that rounded it's just a big thing that the wind hits and Jesse, we're on the list to get the R1S. I think another reason why we should get the R1S is that it might be more efficient in towing because it's got a back that the wind is just gonna slip over and then up and over your trailer. Interesting. And so if we tested that, it might be, well, it might be cool to get the scientific data. Yeah. That's, that's my argument for getting it anyway. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, definitely heading at 60 miles an hour makes a difference. You can already see that we're back up to 1.25 and we haven't even gone the full 15 minutes yet. So that's like, on average with going 72 and then going to 60. So it makes a huge difference to slow down. Again, no big surprise, but I think it also, I've been in uh, cruise control, just regular old dumb cruise control, and uh, I think that that makes a difference as well. You know, before I had been accelerating and deaccelerating between, you know, like 73 and 65, and I think that that acceleration is what really chews through a lot of battery so being able to go a more constant speed yes you'll have to contend with hills but there's far less um, accelerating and deaccelerating and I think that that is what's making a huge difference in terms of range as well as obviously uh, the air resistance so we made it to Maine with about 60 miles remaining in tow mode and we set about getting our camper ready for camping all right so we're set up here at the campsite and uh, all campsites are a little different, but you're probably going to end up with a box, something like this. It's got your breakers there, it's got a 220 volt outlet there, and a 110 volt outlet here. Um, we're using the 110 volt outlet now. The Rivian comes with a couple different dongles. Um, this one is for a 220 volt, so it can take both voltages. Unfortunately, we don't have the right plug. Um, if I unplug the RV for a second, you'll see that this plug will not go in here. You can buy adapters. And I think even Rivian sells some. This is not the correct one, but there's something like this. Basically, two different uh, size plugs. They both are uh, 220 volt AC. And so you could get it to the right socket for this and then be able to charge your car at kind of a level two speed, which would be nice. Um, but at the moment, we're just charging at, I think, two kilowatts, which is really slow. <laughs> uh, it would take about a day to half charge the car. Yeah, it'll be done in four days. Oh. Great. But the cool part is that is now that we've dropped off the camper, um, the Rivian can pull away. And in fact, the range is going to be significantly higher. We have 139 miles now instead of the 70 that we arrived with, or actually even 60 that we arrived with. So that can get us over to a fast charger if we need to. We don't have this big trailer behind us. We can charge up separate from the trailer, leave the trailer as home base. So Zach and I went off for a relaxing e-bike ride through beautiful Old Orchard, Maine. And then later we headed to Portland for dinner. On the way home, we stopped at an Electrify America charger to get some extra range that would get us home the next day. Hey, look, it's more than 150 kilowatts. Yeah, 350, baby. Woohoo! It's great. This is awesome. I mean, this truck is awesome. I mean, like, where's the, where's the trailer? At the, at the campsite. We left it at the campsite. Oh. It's safe and sound. That's the cool part about trailering, I will admit. You know, we got here with like 60 miles of range left. If you're dragging a trailer with you, um, as soon as we unhitch it, now we have 120, 130 miles of range, which you just go like, ah, okay. We probably could have made it with, with the trailer too, but why bring it if we don't have to? And now we're not blocking anybody. We're just a just an ordinary Rivian. At a Walmart. Someone's trailering over there. It would have been so much cheaper and easier. 
if we just trail it right should, here. We should just camp at a Walmart this from now on. This is much better. And look, charging right here. The next morning we had some breakfast and discussed our thoughts as well as our plans for the trip home. All right, so we have a couple days of RVing under our belt now. Yeah. And uh, I feel like I've gained a little bit more insight into charging. Can we talk about charging with a trailer mm. at a DC fast charger? It's totally hit or miss. With Tesla superchargers, you're generally gonna have eight chargers or more. And I feel like what we did yesterday, where we pulled in and blocked all the, the DC fast chargers. Right. I hated that. I hated that too. I, the, hey, look, I don't wanna do that. that that's wrong. Mm. We, we immediately, when that Ionic showed up, we immediately left, we apologized and we left. But with Tesla superchargers, it is much more possible that if there's eight or 12, that you could block four, three or four, and still allow everyone else to do their charging. Because let's face it, in most chargers outside of California, they're, they're, not they're not packed. So that's one possibility. The second thing is I do think you should be prepared to have to dehitch. And I know that that's not something that you look forward to because to dehitch a trailer like this takes about five to 10 minutes. But if you actually played that to your advantage, so like dehitch and hang out in it for an hour and a half and watch True. a movie or take a nap and then like because you're going to be there for a while and here's where i think the ford is going to have an advantage because this trailer in particular takes 220 in and then it distributes it into um you know regular wall outlets but the rivian doesn't have any 220 outlets if the ford which should have a 220 volt outlet that can lead to some very interesting stuff so basically if you pulled in to say an electrify america charger you parked the trailer adjacent to the charger that you were going to use okay and then you know you've either pulled in or backed in the ford and you were fast charging it you could still take the 220 volt outlet plug it into your trailer so you could have air conditioning you could be charging up all your devices you could be turning on a tv you could be doing all the normal things you do in a trailer minus the the water and sewage oh that's up, interesting which the rivian does not have because i forgot without air conditioning if it was a hot day you wouldn't want to be in the trailer that's a great idea i mean i want to talk about the driving for a minute i mean with the trailer the regen braking was excellent how often did you actually brake with the, with the brake pedal. I did it one time when somebody cut out in front of us. An entire trip to Maine, and you basically only hit the brake pedal once. Didn't use brake pads. Um, we have the middle battery size. 135 of the, kilowatt hours. Of the Rivian. We had to get that one because we wanted the truck while it was still new. But they do have a 180 kilowatt hour truck coming out right. soon. And that range should be a, a lot higher. They say 400 miles plus. That's not towing. With towing, I'm, I would expect it to be more like 200 miles. D that doesn't feel like a big difference to me, but I think that it actually I would. think it is. And I want to say that I am super excited about the Cybertruck because the top-end Cybertruck, if Elon is right and can deliver 500 miles of range, that would mean half of that range would be 250. And I think 250 does do what I was talking about, which is for most people, they wouldn't have to charge to get to their location. I think that that's an excellent point. And the other thing is, if you did have to charge, you'd only have to charge once per day. Right. Um, there's a very small chance that you'd be traveling more than 500 miles per day. That means that you could unhitch because you're only doing it once that day. Go charge the truck, bring the truck back, hitch back up because you're only doing it once that day, and then drive off. Let's talk about charging speed for a second. So at a lot of these Electrify America stations, you're going to get 150 kilowatts. Some of them, you are gonna get 300 or 350. This truck can only take 212. We, that's the number we seem to have seen as the max. Mm -hmm. And that's with a low battery charge. Right, and at a 350 kilowatt charger. Right. So being honest here, you're maxing out usually gonna be around 150. That's not bad, I don't wanna make fun of it, but when we're talking Cybertruck, mm. most likely it's gonna be able to take 250, maybe even more. Yeah. And that's gonna be a huge factor because if it can take 250 kilowatts, even though it's gonna have a massive battery, it's going to be charging really fast. And, I mean, we've been hearing about new superchargers in the world. Uh, yeah, 300, 350. If the Cybertruck can do 350, which I think it might be able to. Um, game changer. That would be a game changer as well. I know right now they have pull-ins. And some places, especially I think in Europe, have a lot of pull-throughs. more pull-throughs, uh, the better for trailering. To me, top of mind, if I'm thinking about trailering with an electric vehicle, is speed of unhitching. If you can get something down to a science if you can basically park it in a spot and then dehitch very quickly you know have one person on chains one person on uh getting right. the the ball hitch unlocked and and 
lifted and, and parking brake set, charging won't be that bad. I have a theory that if we took back roads, we would be able to make it without charging. And it would take longer because we would be driving slower and on back roads. When we were driving on back roads, our efficiency was much higher. So, I mean, there's a curve, obviously, right? Yeah. And the faster you go, you hit more and more wind resistance. So you think that, like, 60 seemed to be a sweet spot while we were traveling on the highway? But, I mean, that was getting us, you know, 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. I think taking back roads, we can get closer to 2. Because, to your point, 70 miles an hour was getting us more like 1 right. mile per kilowatt hour. I mean, hour. it's diminishing returns. I'm talking more about he heading at, like, 30 or 40. And so that's not going to be probably the same efficiency boost as going from 70 to 60. But I think that it's going to be significant enough that we could make it home without a full charge. We have about 80 84 percent. Well, do you want to test this? Yeah, I think we could take some back roads. I think that it would change the experience of the trip a little bit. It would be a little bit more adventurous, a little bit more relaxed instead of just sitting on an interstate. But do you think that the Rivian nav system is going to make it easy for us to do that? Or do you think we're going to have to use something like a better route planner? I'm going to be using my skills that I have learned with my Model 3, which is called back Jesse roading. Skills. It's Jesse's back roading skills. It's, uh, it's kind of like doing a maze you know, like at the restaurant, except there's multiple ways because it's a road network as opposed to a maze. But in the Tesla, you are able now to do waypoints. Do Never you? needed it. Oh, so you're just winging it. I, I was doing this before they had waypoints. So I, see. I can wing it Okay. and I think we'll make it. Okay. And if not, there's a few, uh, you know, fast chargers on so the way. So does that mean I should drive and you should navigate or you're gonna drive and I I'll... can do the whole thing. Wow, all right, I love I it. Know. So we're driving home from Maine and this doesn't look like a highway, Jesse. Yep, taking the back roads, and it's so far it's paying off in terms of efficiency. We are hitting 1.76 and going up. It, I mean, what I've been driving for the past five minutes, I think we're going to be able to hit around uh, two miles per kilowatt hour, and that's kind of like what the truck normally gets. So how are we doing on range? I think my theory might might be a little disproven here. Back roads are different everywhere, so I wasn't expecting a 55 mile an hour back road I mean yeah we're on a bit more of a main route as opposed to a highway but yeah 55 is really not giving us a range advantage and plus there there are more hills on on these sorts of routes and just going up hills just sucks up range I mean sure you don't have to use as much on the way down but uh, I think we're gonna find that this is gonna be pretty moot so we had a bit of a slower section I was in the high 30s low 40s and I was able to pull up my efficiency to 1.62 miles per kilowatt hour, which I'm very pleased with. I think that that is even better than what we were doing before. And so just so everyone knows, like normally if you're just driving without a trailer in this truck, you're a little over two miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So approaching two is a good thing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Now, I, I want to stress that I have been hyper -miling. I have not been just driving normally. I've been really causing backups, I'll be honest. I've been I've been slow. Yeah, you're, you're really slow at red lights, like once you're pulling away into the green light. Yes, that's one of them. The other thing is, as soon as I feel like I don't need to be accelerating, I will back off. And uh, this is actually kind of interesting right here. Um, I'll give it a little bit more juice, which I wouldn't normally do. And then I'm gonna kind of accelerate. See that line right there? Ooh, it's hard to hit with your foot. That line means that I'm basically in neutral. Um, I can't do it for very long because we're going uphill, but um, see how I'm approaching the crest of this hill right here. Here we go. Once we hit it, I'm going to try and hit the line. I'm not going to try and use regen. I'm just going to coast. So this is me coasting. I'm staying constant at 47 right here because we're going at a slight downhill. And that's basically, I think, the most efficient way you can move. Anytime you are putting energy into or out of the motors, there is a little bit of inefficiency there. The most efficient thing you can do is just roll in terms of getting the most range on a hole. There are some exceptions to that. Obviously, when you need to slow down, it's best to be using regen braking. And it's best to be using that for, for longer as opposed to having to use full regen braking and then hit the actual brakes and turning your energy into heat. So yeah, just little things like that, little tweaks to the way that I drive, I think are going to make a big difference in our total range. 
How taxing is it to your brain to have to drive like this? I will be honest, it is a little bit more taxing. I really do have to be thinking about it. I can't just be, you know, putting pedal to the metal. I can't just be accelerating and, and waiting to brake. Like here, I'm coming up to a red light. I'm on the line right now. I'm slowing down because I don't know when it's going to turn green and it's better for me to be rolling when I approach it. So I'm actually going to, okay, so now it's green. Now I can start accelerating, but the guy in front of me still had his, his brake lights on. So I'm just going to slowly accelerate and now I'm going to be catching up to him. And I don't want them to cut me off because that would be bad. So he's cutting me off, but this guy won't because he sees reason in his life. Um, and so now I just smoothly transitioned. I didn't come to a stop. You know, Jesse, I was just noticing how pretty it is when you take back roads, because we came the same way except on the highway. Right. We didn't get to see any of this great stuff. I mean, we're going through Dover, New Hampshire, which is beautiful. There is a big plus to taking the back roads. Yeah. I mean, uh, on top of efficiency, there's you get just get to see more. I mean, if you're going on a camping trip or an adventure, I mean, yes, there is a value in getting there quickly, um, but sometimes there's a value in being an adventure. Jesse, I was just taking a look at your efficiency graph here, and wow, you're almost off the charts. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're approaching two uh, miles per kilowatt hour, and uh, with the trailer, that's really amazing, because the thing that I've been hearing over and over again is that, oh, electric, if you tow, you get half the mileage. Yes, if you take it on the highway, yes, that's true. If you don't take it on the highway and you're taking it back roads, you're taking it slow, sub, 45-ish miles an hour, I think you can hit 1.8-ish miles per kilowatt hour. It's gonna depend on the trailer. It's gonna depend on the wheel bearings. It's gonna depend on the temperature outside. It's gonna depend on a lot of things. We have a lot going for us right here, and I'm trying to hypermile it, but in the worst case scenario, if we had uh, taken the wrong turn and gotten, you know, basically blown off course by 20 or 30 miles, and we weren't gonna make it to a charger, this could really save our skin. All right, so we're wrapping this up. We're almost home. Yeah, and uh, we have 54 miles remaining. Wait a second. Yeah. Uh, people are going to think we didn't go anywhere. I know, or people think we're going to charge. We didn't charge, but we have 54 miles remaining. Wait, but we only had 80% battery when we left this morning in Maine. Shows you see that hypermiling can work. Now, it took us twice as long to get home. Sure. But I saw a whole bunch of the country that I've never seen before. That's a good point. You know, I've seen, saw a lot of Maine, a lot of New Hampshire. It's very pretty. We used a lot less energy. We used a lot less energy. And we didn't have to stop and charge, didn't have to unhitch, didn't have to worry about any of it. And uh, now it's just starting to rain. <laughs> Perfect time. Well, we hope that you found those tips uh, useful. We're gonna be testing out more trucks this summer, I guess, if we get our Ford. Uh, we wanna show you how electric pickup trucks work with all kinds of uses, because these are the trucks you're gonna to use to tow things and stuff. And so we wanted to show you range and all that good stuff. Please comment down below the things that you want us to show you that we haven't already. And uh, we'll hopefully be doing that with our Ford F-150. See you next time. Now you know. <laughs>